In recent weeks, we have taken a look at Israel living in disobedience to God's instruction during the period of the judges. In our lesson last week, we saw where that period came to an end. We saw where Israel, they desired to live like the other nations that lived out of fellowship with the Lord. They wanted for man to rule over them rather than God to rule over them. They wanted to have a king. They were not satisfied with the Lord and the Lord given to them judges. And so they wanted man, they wanted a king to rule over them, which the Lord, he heeded, he allowed them to have a king to rule over them. Well, here in our lesson this week, we go back to the latter days of Joshua, where Joshua, he had a word of advice, a word of encouragement for the children of Israel, where he gathers them together. And in his word, he asked them, will you serve the Lord or will you choose to serve someone else? This is a word that while it was important for Israel at that time, it's important for all of us today. you serve? Who will you live in obedience to? Will you live in obedience to yourself? Will you live in obedience to sin? Or do you want the Lord and his grace to have rule over you? I much rather live in obedience to the Lord. I much rather live in obedience to his instructions so that I can receive, so that I can take possession of my blessings. This is a choice that all of us have to make today. And again, it was very important for Israel, as we'll see here in our lesson this week, where our lesson, it opens up there in the first verse with Joshua again, gathering all the tribes of Israel together to Shechem, where that is a very important location. That is where Jacob's well is located at. That's where Joseph's tomb is located at as well. Shechem, it would later become the capital of Israel during the divided kingdom years where Israel, they went to the north and Judah and Benjamin, they were down in the southern kingdom. They would, Shechem would eventually lose that title as being the capital of the northern kingdom. It would move over to Samaria when the northern kingdom, when they completely gave in into living in wickedness. But in Shechem was a very important place. That is again where Joshua, he gathered all of Israel together because again, he had an important word. He had an important message for them, as we'll see here in the 14th verse, where again, he called the children of Israel. He called on them to fear the Lord. He called on them to serve God in sincerity and in truth. So to fear the Lord means that you know what the Lord is capable and able to do, especially in his judgment of sin in his judge of disobedience, in his judgment of wickedness. You know that the Lord, he doesn't tolerate evil. He doesn't tolerate wickedness. You know that God will not abide with it. You know that God's judgment of wickedness is to cast it away from him, cast it away from his presence for all of eternity. That again is what is going to happen at the great white throne. And so because you fear the Lord and his punishment of sin, the God fearing believer will do their best. We will do our absolute best to live in obedience to his instructions because we don't want to suffer his wrath. So we abide by his instructions. We do our best to love him with our whole heart, right? We do our best to love our neighbors as we love ourselves because we know that if we do these things, it will please the Lord. We know that if we do these things that we will find favor in his eyes, we will be blessed and we will go on after our days in this world, we will go on to be able to dwell with him for all of eternity. That is why, again, we live in fear. We are afraid to face the wrath of the Lord. We don't want to face his wrath. You ought not want to face his wrath as well. So. With that in mind, we'll see here in the 15th verse where Joshua, he says to the people, if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, 
This speaks to free will. All of us have free will. God has given to everyone free will. You have a choice. He doesn't dictate to you to serve him. You can choose to serve him or not. You have to understand that when you make that choice, there is a consequence. The Lord will allow you to live any way that you desire to live in this world. The Lord will allow you to worship whomever you will worship. But you must understand that there is a consequence to that choice that you make there. So again, there in the 15th verse, and Joshua said to the people, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served on the other side of the Jordan or the Lord. And Joshua said that he and his house there in the 15th verse said that he and his house would serve the Lord. Essentially, again, Joshua was asking the children of Israel, would they be worshipers of the Lord? That again is a choice that all of us have to make. And again, with him referencing the fathers, those who was across the Jordan, those who at Mount Sinai that decided that they were going to worship a calf of gold rather than wait for Moses to come out of Mount Sinai, those that chose to disregard and abandon the covenant that they made with the Lord, they knew exactly what they were doing. They knew that they were being disobedient. All of us today, we know of God. I imagine that all of you, you have heard of Christ, how he died for the world's sins so that all of us who believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. All of us, we have a choice to make. Will we believe or will we disregard? That is your free will. And again, if you choose to disregard, understand that there are consequences. You will face the Lord. You will face his judgment and God's judgment of your disobedience. It won't be too kind. So again, my encouragement for you today, just as Joshua's, is for you to serve the Lord. Me and my house will serve the Lord because again, I desire to find favor in his eyes. I don't want to suffer his wrath. And again, that's something that you ought not desire to suffer as well today. So we'll see here as we continue on in our lesson here today, they're in the 16th verse. The people, they say that it would be far for them to forsake the Lord to serve other guys. They just, they didn't think that it would be possible for, for them to do that thing. We'll see there in the 17th and the 18th verse that the people, they recounted how the Lord had brought their fathers out of the bondage of Egypt. They recounted all that the Lord had did for them as they went about with Joshua conquering the the promised land. You know, when you consider all that the Lord has done for you and for your loved ones and all that God has done for all of those that came before you, you yourself would imagine that it would be impossible for you to go out and to serve anybody or anything else rather than the Lord. But here we are, we live in a world today where many disregard what what God does for them. Many disregard what the Lord has did for their loved ones, what, what God has done for all of those that came before them. Many of us ask today, we wonder today, well, what has God done for me? Well, I want you to understand today that you are living under God's grace today. You are living under his mercy. Each and every day that we are alive is a new chance. It is a new opportunity, right? It is a new chance, a new opportunity for us to grow and for us to improve ourselves. But sadly, many of us, we take our new chances. We take our new opportunities because of God's grace. We take it for granted where we should not take it for granted. The children of Israel, again, those who are with Joshua, they didn't take it for granted. These who are saying these things here, they did go on as we see in the second chapter of Judges, they did go on to, to be of faith, but we know that there was a generation that came after them, a generation that rose up that did not know the Lord. And because they did not know the Lord, they disregarded him, right? They did not know the works that he had did for their forefathers. So again, they disregarded him. They forsook the Lord and they did evil in the sight of God. They lived in disobedience. My worry today is that there is a generation that is rising up that simply does not care for God. 
apathy, spiritual apathy for the Lord, it is growing in our world. And to me, that is a very scary thing to have a high disregard for the Lord and for all that God does for us and all that God has done for you and all of your loved ones and all of those that came before you. That should not be the case. We should all recognize the Lord. We should all be grateful for the Lord. We should all be appreciative of the Lord and all that he has done for us. And, and how do we show our thanks to the Lord rather than or other than serving him? There's no other way. We are grateful, we are thankful for the Lord when we choose to have faith in him, when we trust in him, when we disregard our own will for the will of the Lord. So we'll see as we continue on here in the 19th and in the 20th verse there, where after their initial response, Joshua, he wanted to make it very clear to the people as to what they were saying. If they were going to be of faith, then Joshua was saying to them that they actually needed to be of faith because God, he is a jealous God, which the Lord said it himself that he is a jealous God. One who cheats on him is one who will dry out his anger, which again, we, we saw that play out throughout the book of Judges, where God, he is a jealous God because he knows what is best for, for you. He knows what is best for all of us. Not only does he know what is best for us, but he knows what awaits us should we get ourselves off track. Should we disregard, should we disobey him? The Lord knows what happens to those who live in disobedience, those who live foolishly. He knows that destruction, that it awaits the fool. And so the Lord, he does not want us. He does not want you to suffer in your soul because you choose to live foolishly. The Lord, as it is said in the 29th chapter of Jeremiah in the 11th verse, he knows what is best for you and he wishes no evil against you. He desires a future, a hope for you. He desires peace for you. The Lord, he wants you to be blessed. God does not want you to suffer. That is why the Lord gets upset. That is why the Lord is jealous when we choose to live in disobedience to him. That is why God is a jealous God. He is jealous because he loves you. So we'll see there in the 21st verse that though he was just making sure with the people, the people, they were adamant with Joshua in their response that they would indeed serve the Lord. And after confirming here what was a promise, Joshua, he made it clear to them there in the 22nd verse that they were a witness to themselves. They were making a vow to the Lord and they were a witness to themselves here, Joshua says, that they were making a vow with God. Something I want you to know and to understand today is that when you make a vow to the Lord, when you make a promise, an agreement, a covenant with the Lord, you better do your absolute best to keep that vow, not to break that vow, not to break that promise, not to break that covenant. As we have already seen in recent lessons, the Lord does not love it when one breaks a vow, when one breaks a covenant with him. Something that all of us as believers today, something that we must understand is that all of us, we have all made a vow to the Lord. When we professed our faith in the only begotten Son of God, when we confessed in our hearts, not just verbally, that we believe in Christ, all of us, we came up under that covenant that the Lord made with us through the shed blood of His only begotten Son. Where you and I, we must live in sincere, that is, honest faith, we must not forsake the Lord because again, we have made a vow with him that we are going to faithfully serve him. There is a commission, a task that has been given to us by Christ that all of us again, we must faithfully serve as well. We must go out into the world and share the good news. The Lord, he desires faith out of us. He doesn't want you to forsake him. So. Again, we must take that vow, that covenant that we have come into an agreement with through our faith in the only begotten Son of the Lord. 
we must take that seriously. Don't break that vow that you have made with the Lord. I tell you today that if you do that, God, he will not be pleased with you. We'll see there in the 23rd verse that to make sure the people understood the vow that they were making to the Lord and to make sure that they understood its significance as well, we'll see that Joshua, he called for the people to put anything away from them that would take them out of fellowship with the Lord. So any idols, anything that would draw them away from the Lord, Joshua said, put it away from you. That's something that again, all of us today, we must do as well. I've said this before in a recent Bible study, we must cut off sin, we must cut off wickedness. I said this in a sermon recently as well. If you identify yourself as a child of God, you must not abide by wickedness. You must live in fellowship with the Lord. God does not abide by sin. God does not live with sin. You as a child of God, you who live in fellowship with the Lord, you ought not be doing that yourself. So again, Joshua said to the people there that they should incline their hearts to the Lord, which again, that is what we should be doing today as well. And we'll see there in the 24th verse that the people again, the people they adamantly said that they would serve the Lord, they would obey his voice. Now again, those who are of this generation with Joshua, those who crossed over the Jordan with Joshua, and those those who became elders and outlived Joshua. The second chapter of Judges tells us that they did. They faithfully uh, lived to the vow, the covenant that they had made with the Lord there in Shechem. But again, we know that a generation rose up after them that did not know the Lord, that forsook the Lord, and, and they lived, they did evil in the sight of God. So our biggest takeaway from our lesson this week should be that we understand that all of us, we have made a covenant with the Lord through our faith in the only begotten Son of Christ. If, if you have accepted Christ as your Savior, you have made a covenant in your heart today, and you should live in obedience to God's instructions. You should live faithfully to the Lord if you have made that, that vow to God. All of us, again, there is a choice to the world today. Are you going to serve the Lord or not? You have free will. You can choose to, to live however you please. But again, understand there is a consequence to the choice that you make. If you believe that it is evil, the word of God that I share with you today and that other ministers will share with you and that other believers will testify to you, if you think that that is evil, if you believe that we are sharing a false message with you, then you have every right it's your will. You could choose to disregard our word. But again, understand that I am sharing with you the divine truth. And if you disregard the divine truth of the Lord, there's going to be a consequence. All of us, we will one day stand before the Lord and we will come under fire. We will face his judgment. And the Lord, he's going to determine whether or not you live in obedience or disobedience. Understand again, there is a consequence. If you live in obedience, you will be rewarded by the Lord. But if you choose to live in disobedience, you're not going to be rewarded by the Lord. You're going to be cast away from him for everlasting life. So that is the choice that all of us have to make today. Will you faithfully serve the Lord or will you serve yourself? Will you be a servant of sin?